Hello, my name is Nigel and this is Off Grid Power Solutions. If you are building out a van, then this channel is for you. We cover everything from electrical setups, solar power, even through to converting vans. We convert vans ourselves and we absolutely love that sort of stuff. So I hope you find something here that's useful. In this video, we're gonna be looking at how to crimp connectors well onto your wiring so that you get a really solid connection. I'll start off by saying when you, when it comes to your electrical system in your van, you need to make sure that you size your wiring correctly so that you have the correct size and gauge of wire for the current and the voltage that you're gonna be passing through it. And this is really important because if you pass too much current through a small wire, that wire can burn out and that's how you create electrical fires and you can burn your rig down in a heartbeat. So make sure you get the sizing of your wiring down and correct. Most of your charging systems and solar systems and all that sort of stuff in the spec sheets that the manufacturers provide, they'll have information in there around the sizing of the wiring and stuff like that. So I know when I put in the DC to DC charger in my rig, there was a table in the spec sheet in the manual that came with the charger that told me the distance that the cable's covering and what size that cable should be. So if it's like up to seven meters, it needed to be like two gauge wire etc etc so most of them will have that sort of information in the spec sheet if they don't then I would probably question that manufacturer and how good that equipment is but yeah we're gonna be looking at a bunch of stuff here I'm gonna start off by looking at this so you probably have one of these in your toolbox or lying around your house most people will this is your stock standard electrical tool it's a wire cutter and um, crimping tool wire stripper kind of all in one thing <clears throat> and if I was to start using this now I would get a lot of flack in the comments because the pros hate this guy. Uh, I've used one of these extensively over the years, even as a teenager building out rigs and stuff with my dad. Uh, we would have used one of these a lot back in the day and I have one of these in most of my vehicles because they're a really handy tool if you're in a pinch, if you're out on the road and something goes wrong, you have a wire that comes disconnected or breaks or something like that. Uh, if you're in a pinch, this is a really solid tool. I probably wouldn't recommend this to a beginner just because it's kind of uh, needs a little bit of intuition and know-how as to what to do with it and how to actually use it. Uh, for example, how much force should you actually exert on a connector to get a good crimp, that sort of thing. A lot of that sort of stuff will only come with knowledge and experience and really knowing the feel of the connectors and stuff like that. So if you have one of these, and you don't know what you're doing, then I would probably recommend shelve it and get a couple of tools that I'll talk through here that will give you a better idea and kind of has a bit of a safety net built into it so that you know that you're getting a good connection on your crimp. So I'm gonna run through a couple of things here. You'll probably have seen one of these around. This is just a heavy duty hand crimping tool. And this just works on leverage and the mechanics that, um, in terms of you actually closing it to get your crimp right. Uh, you kind of get your, whether you have a good crimp or not, you know that by whether the teeth and the dies have closed. And so the manufacturer of this is kind of assuming that once you close this to that point, if your t connector is good and you've got the right size wire on that connector, then that should be a solid crimp. I've used one of these quite a lot uh, and yeah, I quite like them. It's quite versatile because you can change the, the dies on the fly. So if you're working with different size cabling and things like that, then you can change that pretty easily. It's quite versatile from that point of view. The next option is one of these hand hydraulic crimping tools. So this, in my opinion, gets a slightly better uh, crimp than that other one, than the first one, uh, because you, you are able to put more force on it. Again, it works on the basis that once the dies close, they're assuming that that's a solid crimp. So provided you've sized your cabling and your terminal correctly, uh, that is a really solid choice. And uh, again, these all of this stuff, none of it is super expensive either. So this guy here, you're talking about $35, about 28 pounds or thereabouts. And this guy here is slightly more, about $60 or 50 pounds. Uh, the next one <coughs> that we have here is a ratchet crimping tool. So this is designed for insulated. Well, the good thing about this is that you can change the dies. So you can see these two bolts here. This allows you to remove the dies and change them out depending on what you're using. Because the way that these dies are 
designed is that they're designed for different type of crimping connectors. So this one here, you can see there's no actual teeth in the in the gaps for the dies. And the reason for that is so that you would use it on these sort of uh, insulated connectors where you don't want to be piercing the, the insulation. Uh, here's another example of a ratchet a crimping tool where it has a teeth that goes right down in the middle of that gap as you can see there and that's designed for your non-insulated crimping connectors uh, because it doesn't matter if you push it uh, one of the teeth right in the middle of the uh, crimping connector because there's no insulation on it uh, this here is a wire stripping tool so the idea is that you put your wire in like that I'll just grip it and then show you so your wire goes in like that and as you squeeze it it then does a perfect cut and removes the insulation off the wire like that um, and it's a really solid tool it saves you having to use a Swiss Army knife or a Stanley knife or something like that to bare your wires and for thinner wires it's good because a lot of these thinner wires the actual copper inside the wire will be quite small it's easy to cut even just with a knife uh, so that's a really solid tool <clears throat> and then lastly is this guy here it looks a bit medieval it's quite a strange looking thing but this is just a big wire cutter for large gauge wire like this is uh, one over zero or 50 millimeters squared and uh, this is what i would use to cut this wire uh, just because it's quite a pain when I was a teenager working with this sort of wire I used to cut it with stuff like a hacksaw and things like that which is very messy and just not ideal so you can get tools like this I think this was like $30 or £25 something like that I'll link all of these tools down in the description below if you're interested in looking for tools for your setup uh, but yeah I mean if I was building out a van I would definitely I mean these are kind of your bare minimum these tools here so a ratchet crimper a wire stripper and then a, a hydraulic crimper for your bigger cables and so these all in is like a hundred bucks or not even 80 pounds thereabouts and that'll get you really solid connections on your crimps so let's jump in here i'm going to be using a swiss army knife to bear the insulation on this uh, because i can't find my proper um wire stripper so uh, don't come at me in the comments please but what i would tend to do is i put my thumb on the cable like that i then measure how much i need to remove of the insulation so thereabouts um, some people like to mark it but i just do it this way just because it's more efficient and then i then put my blade or my wire stripper about where my thumb is and i just turn that very carefully now you don't need to put a load of force because you don't need to you don't want to be cutting the actual copper but you just want to be getting through the insulation to where the copper starts and again being careful not to actually cut your finger so we are nearly there Okay, there we go. And I then put the terminal or the connector rather onto there, twist it on, make sure that I got the sizing right. It's pretty close. Probably slightly too much copper sticking out there so I could turn it on a bit there. Um, I then will take this crimping tool and push it through pretty much slap bang in the middle i already have the right dies in for this size wire or this size connector rather i push it in until the crimping tool is holding it i then will twist the wire in as much as possible um, because you're moving it around a fair amount you it takes a bit of practice but i like to just put my finger over the top of the jaw like that so that i can pull the wire in and then i just rest the bottom of the tool on the table or workbench or something and then i just pump it once you get pretty close to the end it'll then be holding the wire and you can do the last little bits i pretty much go until i can't go anymore and then you know that your um dies have hit and in theory that is a really solid crimp so you then back off release the knob that holds it and do a bit of a tug test 
and that is a solid crimp. Now with these sort of uh, connectors, I like to put a bit of heat shrink on. So I'll just take heat shrink. I just usually will just guess it. Uh, you can measure it if you want to, but basically what you're wanting to do is to get to about the about there as it starts curving down on the connector and then about probably half an inch onto the actual cable. So there about um, use a pair of scissors or a knife. Just get that nice and straight. Stick that over and then get your heat gun. So I tend to hold the back of it with my thumb like that and we'll just make sure you don't want the heat shrink going over the end of the t of the connector because this is where you you're going to be getting most of your conductivity is going to be coming through that flat bit there so i then just heat this up using a heat gun basically as, as soon as you start i like this heat shrink because it uh, has an adhesive in it, so it glues and sets really nice and hard and solid. Um, but as soon as you start seeing the adhesive coming out the bottom of the, the top and the bottom of the uh, heat shrink, then you're good to go. And that's a good solid connection. You then just let that heat shrink cool down and dry like that. And uh, we'll look at the next thing here. So next, I'm gonna take this cable here which I already bared, but I'll just for demonstration purposes. So this is a small cable. So this is like uh, 17 gauge or one and a half millimeter squared. So this is what you would use for stuff like LED lights, things like that. So really low current. Um, so again, I'll try and do it this way so that you can see you put the cable into the cable um, stripper like that. It has a little stopper to tell you where to where it should go to. You then just squeeze it down. And when you pull it like that, it then bears the cable perfectly for you. Super handy and simple. Uh, for this cable, you want to be using most of these connectors that are red will be for this sort of size. So you then just push the cable through like that. I like to then just hold it into my crimping tool in the right uh, die like that. And then I always just push it so that I can just see the cable, the copper sticking out the top of the insulation over there, as you can see. Um, so if we pretty much good to go, you then just keep crimping until you hear the click. So it's gone past the point where it's actually reached the end. And that's a pretty solid connection. I always just do a tug test. Uh, it's, it's broken the insulation there a little bit, um, but it's not too bad, but that's a pretty solid connection on there. I, I really like these uh, connectors, which you can find on Amazon. They have heat shrink built in. So the idea with this is once you've crimped it, you can then heat it up using your heat gun. Same as what we did with these. And I just really like using a uh, heat shrink over the traditional connectors, just cause I think it has a more solid connection. Um, it's just neater and I just like the heat shrink like that. So this is 10 millimeter squared and I'm going to put a non-insulated connector onto here to demonstrate that, but it's essentially the same sort of process. So I would put the connector onto the cable to measure how much insulation I need to remove. And again, I'm using the old uh, Heath Robinson Swiss Army knife method. Um, don't try that unless you are comfortable with using knives. Uh, I would definitely recommend a proper wire stripper and I'll link one down below. But yeah, remove the insulation. You then put your connector on. I like to twist it down. Sometimes the wires go out of the connector. So just take it off, put it back on. You can see there the wires gone all the way to the top, that gap. You want to see them just pushing up against there nicely. And then I'm going to use this connector. So this is another ratchet connector. So I'm going to push the connect, uh, sorry, ratchet uh, crimper. I'm going to push the connector in probably pretty much in the middle of the die of the jaws there. I'm then going to with uh, this, my left hand, I'm pushing the cable into the connector and then I just start crimping it and I keep going all the way until I hit the bottom of the connector and it releases. And then at that point, I know that's a really solid connection there. You can see what I meant earlier where it just pushes the tooth right into the middle of that connector there. And it's a really solid connection. 
that's not going anywhere. Uh, I would then put a bit of insulation uh, over the top of that. So either insulation tape or my preference is always heat shrink. Uh, so I have tons of heat shrink in my workshop that I use for this sort of stuff. And there we go. So I hope this video has been helpful. If you're building out a van or anything like that, then I would highly recommend join our email list. I'll link it down below at the top of the description. We send out a weekly email with tips and tricks and advice and all sorts of things. It's uh, really valuable information that we put out there every week into your inbox. So if you want in on that, then jump onto that list down below. Otherwise, if you have any questions for us or topics you want us to cover in future videos, then drop a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thank <laughs> you.